Michael's Monastery. This is the home, again, of the New Warrior Ministries. This ministry is designed for you specifically who have left the church, for you who have a faith that may be waning, who are unsure of where you belong, for you who are seeking the truth through whatever means or avenue or path that you're taking, that don't yet know that Jesus Christ is the truth, we're here for you. We are for you. Now those who have left the church, we're not necessarily asking you to come and join us. We're just trying to bring you back to the church. See, we don't take donations. We don't want your money. We want your soul for Christ. That's what we want. And if if you are a member of some orthodox church that you have left wherever you are and you want to go back to them, then go ahead, help yourself. We're not, we're not trying to draw you into us. We're not trying to grow in numbers for power or authority or riches. They want you with Christ. We look for priests, of course, deacons. We want those who would love to become members of the hierarchy of the church or clergy of the church or laymen if that's where you want to stay in the congregation that's fine we just want you with Christ that's the new warrior ministries we are part of the autocephalous orthodox catholic church of the americas there's three bishops three and we all have the same philosophy. We all have the same agreement on bringing people to Christ. And yeah, again, I'm going to say, of course, we would love you to join us. But we're not going to ask you for your money. So we want you to come to Christ first. We're going to give you the unvarnished truth. We are currently in a series. This is video number seven called Who is Jesus the Christ? And I'm going to tell you again, the very first video, we learned who Jesus the Christ was. And you can just open up a Bible to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, and you'll learn right there who he is. It tells you right up front. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No mistaking. Jesus Christ is God from God. He is the Son of God as in the flesh. So, I hope that you have the opportunity to enjoy a nice cup of tea while you watch this video. And while I'm working, not while I'm, of course, filming, but while I am working, I do enjoy some fruits and vegetables as well. Right now, cherries are good. So relax. We are in a uh, study of the Didache which goes back to the first century Christians, the very first century Christians. It's a very basic understanding that teaches you a lot of things, what you have to know and do and how to live to become a Christian, what you have to do, the process to become that Christian, and then what to do once you're in the church, which is where we're at now. We learned in our last video, number six, um, about prophets pastors, teachers, priests, what a true prophet was and what a true prophet was not, what to do with them if they were true or not true, and whether or not they should get paid, which of course once you discover that they are true and you want them to stay with you and teach you and be your spiritual guide, then of course they, they can be paid. We're not, we don't object to being paid. <laughs> we don't want to be paid. We don't take your money. But a good pastor, a good priest, a spiritual leader should be paid. I mean, if you want him 24-7, he's got to eat. <laughs> and we learned how to take care of that also in the last video. So now we're continuing on chapter 14. There's 16 chapters in this Didache. 
we will probably finish 14, 15, and 16 today. Let's see how it goes. I am not preaching in these videos. These are strictly a teaching video. I'm reading through one of our books, Basic Christian Understanding. And that's exactly what it is, very basic. Bringing to you the very basics so that you can understand easier. So chapter 14 of this Didache. But on the Lord's Day, so now we're going to go to Sunday worship. We haven't got there yet. We are there now. But on the Lord's Day, after you have assembled together, break bread and give thanks, having in addition confessed your sins, that you that your sacrifice may be pure. So I want to stop right there. Okay? There's a lot of whining and crying that goes on throughout Christendom. There are more crybabies in the church than I think exist anywhere. I don't know why. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They come in different disguises. Some are arrogant and nasty. Some are very subtle liars like snakes. And some are just a bunch of whiners. One of the things that I hear about so much is this communion. Eucharist, we call the Eucharist. Holy Eucharist. Holy communion. It's the body of blood and it's the true body of blood. We already learned that in previous videos. This right here is another issue that we hear crying about Catholicism in general. Is It's a sacrifice. Uh, why do you hate that? Why do so many people hate that? Right here in this Didache, first century Christianity. So I'm, I'm going to read this to you until you get it in your head. First century Christianity. This is how it started, folks. There was no Bible. It didn't exist. Nobody had a Bible. This was the teachings of the church written down in the first century. But on the Lord's day, after that you have assembled together, break bread and give thanks, having in addition confessed your sins. So stop the whining about, oh, I confess to God, because you don't. I know you don't. I have known way too many people. Look, I'm going to be 66 years old. I've been to church a long time. And I've been in a whole lot of different ones. All over the country, all over the world, I've been in different places. A whole lot of people don't confess. <laughs> you can say what you want. You can argue with me and send me nasty letters. I know that you do not every night confess to God your sins. I know that you don't. Now, I also know many people do. But most of the criers who swear by God Almighty that they confess to God and not to a priest, they don't confess at all. I, I know this for a fact. I don't care what you say. But on the Lord's Day, after that you have assembled together, break bread and give thanks, having in addition confessed your sins that your sacrifice may be pure. Boom. Sacrifice. This is what it was called. This is a pure sacrifice. Jesus said, offer unto me a pure sacrifice. And this is what the Christians of the first century called it. They sacrifice, so that your sacrifice may be pure. By how? Confessing your sins first. Repent, confess, and believe, right? So that your sacrifice may be pure. But let not anyone who has a quarrel with his companion join with you until they be reconciled that your sacrifice may not be polluted. This is very important and I'm going to irritate you to no end because I'm going to say it again. But let, but let not anyone who has a quarrel with his companion join with you until they be reconciled that your sacrifice may not be polluted. <laughs> I got blood vessels that popped in my eye yesterday. If, uh, if, if I look a little wired here, my eyes probably all red and bloodshot still. And I'm reading without my glasses because I'm reading from the computer, and it puts a glare in my glasses, and you can see you can see the reflection of the computer rather than me. So I'm reading without my glasses, and they're all bloodshot right now. But let not anyone who has a quarrel with his companion join with you until they be reconciled that your sacrifice may not be polluted. For it is that which is spoken by the Lord. 
in every place and time. Offer unto me a pure sacrifice, for I am a great king, says the Lord, and my name is wonderful among the Gentiles. Okay, I already said that, didn't I? So that's chapter 14. I'm just going to read straight through the verses for you, and I won't interrupt them. Let you have the flow of chapter 14. But on the Lord's day, after you have assembled together, break bread and give thanks, having in addition confessed your sins, that your sacrifice may be pure. But let not anyone who has a quarrel with his companion join with you, until they be reconciled, that your sacrifice may not be polluted. For it is that which is spoken of by the Lord in every place and time, offering unto me a pure sacrifice. For I am a great king, says the Lord, and my name is wonderful among the Gentiles. Chapter 15. Elect, therefore, for yourselves bishops and deacons worthy of the Lord. Elect for yourselves bishops and deacons worthy of the Lord, who are meek and not covetous, and true and approved, for they perform for you the service of prophets and teachers. Not covetous. You know what that means? That means they don't need a 62-room mansion, and they don't need three jets. They don't need one jet. They don't ask you for money so they can store it up for riches while you squander. Elect therefore for yourselves bishops and deacons worthy of the Lord, men who are meek and not covetous and true and approved, for they perform for you the service of prophets and teachers. Do not therefore despise them, for they are those who are honored among you together with the prophets and teachers. Rebuke one another, not in wrath, but peaceably, as you have commandment in the gospel. And let no one speak to anyone who walks disorderly with regard to his neighbor, neither let him be heard by you until he repent. Oh man, chapter 15, confess and repent. <laughs> This is first century. I know I've said it, I don't know, 500 times through the videos. Confess and repent. I write it. I say it when I write. I say it when I meet people. Confess and repent. First century Christianity. It's right here in the book. Look it up for yourself. Do a search. The Didache. Didache is also a correct, correct pronunciation. Uh, I've heard some people say didache because They've never seen the word before. Look it up. Rebuke one another, not in wrath, but peaceably, as you have commandment in the gospel. And let no one speak to anyone who walks disorderly with regard to his neighbor, neither let him be heard by you until he repent. But let your prayers and your almsgivings and all your deeds so do as you have commandment in the gospel of our Lord. Okay, we are to obey Christ. It's not a once saved, always saved. That's a famous line. <laughs> it's not true. We are to obey Christ. Chapter 15. Now let me read those three, four verses to you straight through. So you get the whole flow. Elect therefore for yourselves bishops and deacons worthy of the Lord. Men who are meek and not covetous. And true and approved. For they perform for you the service of prophets and teachers. Do not therefore despise them, for they are those who are honored among you, together with the prophets and teachers. Rebuke one another, not in wrath, but peaceably, as you have commandment in the gospel. But let no one speak to anyone who walks disorderly with regard to his neighbor, neither let him be heard by you until he repent. But your prayers and your almsgivings and all your deeds so do as you have commandment in the gospel of our Lord. All right, chapter 16. Let's see if we can get through this, if I can calm down, not talk so much, right? Watch concerning your life. Let not your lamps be quenched or your loins be loosed, but be 
you ready, for you know not the hour at which our Lord comes. Don't let your lamps be quenched or your loins loose. Stay on fire and keep yourself bound up. This free sex. Of course, I know I grew up through the 60s. I don't think it's called free sex today, but this sleeping wherever you want with whoever you want, any sex you want, including animals today, <laughs> is wrong. Watch, concern your life. Let not your lamps be quenched. Stay on fire for Christ. Don't let your faith die. Don't let your fire go out. This is your life for eternity. This is your soul. You're fighting the forces of evil, of darkness. It's not going to stop. So don't let your fire go out. Or your loins be loosed, but be ready. For you know not the hour at which our Lord comes. We have no clue when he's coming. We haven't seen the evil one yet. We haven't seen the the antichrist yet so he's not coming till after that person is revealed but we don't know when that's going to be but be you gathered together frequently seeking what is suitable for your souls for the whole time of your faith shall profit you not unless you be found perfect in the last time again don't let your fire go out because if you spend 99 and a half years living on fire for Christ and the last six months of your life you're dead to Christ you forgot him you walk away I'm not talking because you're senile either if you're of sound mind and body and have no excuse if you walk away you've walked away it don't matter 99 and a half years don't matter if you walked away you've walked away it's basically what that's saying for in the last days false prophets and seducers shall be multiplied and the sheep shall be turned into wolves, and love shall be turned into hate. And because iniquity abounds, they shall hate each other, and persecute each other, and deliver each other up. And then shall the deceiver of the world appear as the Son of God, and shall do signs and wonders. And the earth shall be delivered into his hands, and he shall do unlawful things, such as have never happened since the beginning of the world. You need to understand this, folks. You need to understand this. I'm going to say those verses again in sequence. These four, then I'll go to the next ones. Watch concerning your life. Let not your lamps be quenched or your loins be loosed, but be you ready, for you know not the hour at which our Lord comes. But be you gathered together frequently, seeking what is suitable for your souls, for the whole time of your faith shall profit you not, unless you be found perfect in the last time. So the whole idea of I don't have to worship, I don't have to go to church, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> for in the last days false prophets and seducers shall be multiplied, and the sheep shall be turned into wolves, and love shall be turned into hate. And because iniquity abounds, they shall hate each other. Does that happen in the church today? How many different groups and denominations constantly can't stand one another? How many attacks are put out against one from another? And persecute each other and deliver each other up. You're going to be turning people into the law too when the law changes. You watch, a true Christian will be turned in by other so-called Christians who are false. And then the deceiver of the world appear as of the Son of God and shall do signs and wonders and the earth shall be delivered into his hands and he shall do unlawful things such as have never happened since the beginning of the world. He's coming and the world's going to be handed to him. He doesn't have to take it. Then shall the creation of man come to the fiery trial of proof and many shall be offended and shall perish but they who remain in their faith shall be saved by the rock of offense itself. And then shall appear the signs of the truth, first the sign of the appearance in heaven, then the sign of the sound of the trumpet, and thirdly, the resurrection of the dead. Not of all, but as it has been said, the Lord shall come and all his saints with him. Then shall the world behold the Lord coming out of the clouds of heaven. 
Got that? I hope so. I'm going to read it to you again. Then shall the creation of man come to the fiery trial of proof, and many shall be offended and shall perish. But they who remain in their faith shall be saved by the rock of offense itself. And then shall appear the signs of the truth. First, the sign of the appearance in heaven. Then the sign of the sound of the trumpet. And thirdly, the resurrection of the dead. Not of all, but as it has been said, the Lord shall come and all his saints with him. Then shall the world behold the Lord coming on the clouds of heaven. This is the end of the Didache. That's it for this video today. Video number seven, Who is Jesus the Christ? Please pay attention to the words, not because they're my words. I'm just the messenger. I'm just reading to you the words of the first Christian church. Okay, be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.